Hey there, church. Pastor Mike here. Hope you're having a great week. Thank you for joining us for this midweek update. And welcome to my wife, Martha, who is back with us this week for our discussion. Thank you. It's good to be with you again. Great. We are picking up where we left off last week in Psalm 119, looking at verses 57 through 64. We pulled out four themes from these eight verses for discussion. We discussed last week our first two themes, conviction and commitment. If you weren't if you weren't able to join us last week, those videos are available on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Our two remaining themes are contentment and companionship. And we're going to talk about contentment today and leave companionship for next week. And the reason we're doing that is because we'd like to talk a little bit in the last half of this update about where we are in our nation in relation to this theme of contentment. So let's start out by reading verse 57. It says, The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. The psalmist there in verse 57 says, The Lord is my portion. Uh, the word portion puts me in mind of, of, of food and our longing to be filled mm -hmm. physically. And there the psalmist recognizes and believes that the Lord is his portion, that he will fulfill every need yeah. of his. Yeah. Such an amazing truth. It sort of naturally makes me ask the question that the psalmist asked in chapter 8, which mm -hmm. is, what is man that you are mindful of him, yeah. the son of man that you would care for him? You know, God being who he is with all things at his command could give us a lot of good things. And, you know, he, he does give us a lot of good things. Absolutely. It says in Psalm 84, God withholds no good thing for those who walk uprightly. Yes, and he just doesn't give us his blessing. He gives us himself. And right. what else could we want besides that? Anything else we may think we want would be an immeasurably lesser thing. Absolutely, and, and when, we, when we grasp that truth, uh, we can be perfectly content with, with Him and in Him regardless of our circumstances. We talked about this last week. Our life can be, uh, can be very difficult at times. The circumstances of life can be very difficult. And so um, because we, we have Him, because He Himself is our portion, we can have everything that we need. I mean, church, I think about over the past two years as, as pastor here at Whitefield, we have suffered some significant losses. We've had to say goodbye to loved ones, mm -hmm. and that's painful, church. Mm -hmm. but, but because the Lord is our portion, He can meet every need that we have. Yeah, we can't get around a lot of those painful circumstances. Right. Re uh, suffering is no respecter of persons, but to those whose portion is the Lord, we can have perfect peace and contentment and joy in spite of suffering. Right. We often use the statement, obedience brings blessing. Mm -hmm. And this is so true, but I think it's also helpful to talk about what it means when we say that. Right, right. Sometimes we can we can misuse that, that statement and, and, and think that, okay, if I'm obedient to God, then then He will bless my, my family. He'll owe me by, by blessing me uh, by, for my obedience and blessing my family and everything will go right. But that's a, that's a great misuse of that statement. Yeah, it is because we're talking about suffering that is common to man living in a fallen world. Right. But there's also this preventable suffering. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, when we're following Christ, we're obeying God, we save ourselves that preventable suffering mm -hmm. of painful consequences. Right. And it also brings the blessing of a sweet, unfettered relationship mm -hmm. between us and Him. You know, nothing sure. between us and Him, but right. it doesn't necessarily mean that you and your family will always be perfectly healthy and wealthy in this life. Right, right. But because what He has given us is Himself, our portion never changes. Our hope is immovable and unshakable. That is one of his wondrous attributes. He is immutable. Yes, that is, thank God that he is. Mm -hmm. In a world of changing circumstances, and, and even I myself am, am to, uh, prone to frequent change, he remains who he's always been, and he'll remain who he'll always be. Uh, it reminds me of a quote from, from, from Spurgeon, and I'll, I'll read it here. It says, Consider what you owe to God's immutability. Though you have changed a thousand times, mm -hmm. he has not changed once. So what a, what a blessing it is to have a God who's perfect and doesn't change. 
So we've talked about suffering that is common to all men living in a fallen world. And we also talked about self-induced suffering that comes from disobeying God's commands. And now we want to talk about suffering and persecution because we are Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus told his followers that just as the world persecuted him, it will persecute us. Absolutely, exactly. We shouldn't be surprised by persecution, church, that we face in this world by following God's word. Not only should we not be surprised by it, we should be prepared for it. Paul wrote a letter to Timothy, Timothy, 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. He tells Timothy to endure suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ, not being ent entangled with the affairs of this life. Yeah, and so many times I think we're guilty of doing the exact opposite of that. Right. Spending all our time and energy on things that will pass away. And instead of preparing our hearts for persecution, we are preparing to avoid it at all costs. Right, right. It's, it's not that we don't stand up for, for what's right. Church, we, we do that. We should always do that. Mm -hmm. Doing our, our civic duty and to ensure justice and to discourage religious persecution is a very mm -hmm. good thing. But knowing on the basis of God's word that persecution will come, I think it would behoove us to prepare ourselves for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But keeping our lives and our hearts and our relationship with God as it should be, you know, ever growing in Him, mm -hmm. ever depending on Him, mm -hmm. so that when these times of ever increasing persecution comes, we'll be ready for it. Mm -hmm. And we won't be able to do that in our own power without mm -hmm. Him. No. So if we can be so bold to do so, let's talk about that in relation to where we are in our nation right now. Church, as you are watching this update, yesterday, November 3rd, was Election Day. And Mike and I decided to film this update. So as we're talking with you, we don't know yet the outcome of the election. And we did this because the things that we are saying today about God and His directives to us are as true on November 2nd as they are today and as they will be every day until He calls us home. Amen. Amen. So... Let's look at how God instructs us to respond to authority. First off, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-4, through 4, it says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So first of all, we, sh we should pray for those mm -hmm. who are in authority over us, regardless of, of how we feel about them. Definitely. So we see there that we should pray for them. Let's also look at Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. The Word of God says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. So secondly, because God has ordained the authority that has been placed over us, we should respect them. Even, as you said before, if we disagree with them and even if we are compelled to speak out against their wrong behavior, we should do so with respect. Right. Now, we don't see a lot of that respectful behavior in the media today mm -hmm. or even in the politicians themselves. So right. let's not let them be our cube yes. and our example to follow. We have to use the Word of God as our plumb line. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And over in the book of Acts, Peter and the apostles were brought before the high priest. And, and listen to what the high priest says to them, beginning in verse 28 of chapter 5, saying... We strictly charged you not to teach in this name, and that being the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must mm -hmm. obey God rather than men. And so we learned in Romans 13 that we should respect authority, and it also says that we should live in subjection to them. So we should obey their laws except for the case that we see here in the book of Acts 
when man's law opposes God's law. That's right. In those cases, church, we ought always to obey God rather than men. And there will be consequences Mm -hmm. when we do that. That's when persecution comes in. But church, in those times, we must stand firm in God's Word, remembering that He is our portion and He is our strength. Church, I am so grateful to have been born in this country. Nations, governments, states, organizations, they can all be very good things, things that God has, has used and uses for order in this world. So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being engaged in those things, nothing whatsoever. In fact, we should be. But remember, these things are all temporary. Institutions in themselves, they will pass away. All a, a tiny blip on the screen of eternity, of God's kingdom. So we can never let those things eclipse our focus for Him and of His kingdom. We are Americans, but we are also strangers Mm -hmm. and pilgrims here. Our true citizenship is in heaven. That's right, and that reminds me of Hebrews 11 where it says, we acknowledge that we are strangers and foreigners on this earth. And people who say such things make it clear that we are longing for a better country, a heavenly one. And it also says, therefore God is not ashamed to be our God and He is preparing this place for us. Absolutely. C.S. Lewis talks about this in his book, uh, The Weight of Glory. He says it like this, and I, I quote, There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. Nations, cultures, arts, civilizations, these are all, all moral in their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is with immortals whom we joke with, work with, Mm -hmm. marry, snub, and exploit. That's right, and that's such a good segue to our topic next time, which will be the final theme in this passage of companionship. We're going to expand that a bit and talk about how we should uh, respond to and treat believers and how we should respond to and treat unbelievers. So, because just as you said, while the nation will pass away, mm-hmm. the people in it will live in, it will live forever. Absolutely. So, it is important for us to know how we should treat them and how we should love them because so many things, even, even mm-hmm. good things in our walk with the Lord, you know, our search for knowledge. Yes prophecies, interpretations, even our faith will one day become sight. So all these things will come to an end, but the Bible says love never ends. Absolutely. Amen. Church, our our time is gone for today. I hope you will join us next time as we finish our discussion on these eight verses. And let me leave you with a few verses from Romans chapter 8, one of the greatest chapters in all of Scripture. It says, What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us? How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It's been good to be with you, church. We love you. God bless you. We hope to see you Sunday.